Hi, this is Gary Rubenstein. This is the third part of uh, my presentation of Feynman's Lost Lecture. Uh, I wanted to remind you that in the first tutorial I mentioned that one of Kepler's rules was that uh, planets sweep out equal times, equal areas in equal times. So here I have a uh, planet and also where that planet will be sort of two seconds later. As you can see, we have this triangle-looking thing, which has a skinny vertex angle when it's far away from the sun and has a wider vertex angle when it's closer to the sun. Kepler says that planets will sweep out, meaning creating this sort of triangle thing, this sort of like a sector of an ellipse, equal areas in equal times. And what I want to show you in this part of the tutorial is how Newton's uh, impulse method uh, leads to this as a consequence. Here's a reminder of what I said in the last tutorial about what I call Newton's impulse model. Uh, the planet is here at A and here's the Sun and the planet moves from A to B in a certain amount of time and it sweeps out this, um, this triangle here. And that, that triangle has a certain area which turns out uh, to be 7.45 square centimeters. Now, if the sun does not exert any force at all, what will happen next is that the planet will just continue from B to lowercase c. And, and B to lowercase c is the same distance as A to, to B. So, so this will happen. And that will create a sweep out, a triangle also, which is this triangle over here. And I, I want to show you that those two triangles, uh, as I measured it, as you can see, they have the same uh, area. But I want to do a little short geometric proof of why that happens. Here I have a triangle A, C, D, and B is at the midpoint of, uh, of C, D. And if I were to, um, if I were to rotate this triangle so that sort of the base of it would be horizontal, what you can see, if I draw in the height of this triangle, this height here is not only, it, 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 it's the height of, not only is it the height of the big triangle, A, uh, D, C, but it's the height of this orange triangle, it's the altitude, and it's also the height of this obtuse triangle here, because an obtuse triangle, the height is kind of located sort of outside. If I drop this perpendicular down to the line, uh, the continuation of the base, we get this height. So, so the heights of all three of these triangles are the same. Now, uh, DB and BC are congruent because B is the midpoint, and that's why these two triangles have the same area. Now, if I take this entire picture and rotate it this way, well, now I have the same situation, and these two triangles will have the same area. And this is going to agree with the Newton picture. As you can see, these two triangles are the same situation because A, B, and B, C are congruent, and these, uh, have, these two triangles have the same height. So if the sun's not exerting a force at all, then Kepler's rule is definitely going to be true, that the planet will have swept out equal areas in equal times. It will have swept out these two triangles, which have the same area in the same amount of time. But... Um, this isn't how the planet is actually going to move because the sun is going to exert force. So I'm going to move the planet back to, uh, to point B. And now instead of going from B to lowercase c, what's going to happen is that there's going to be this, this force. And when there's a force, what happens is the force is directed from capital B to capital S. Um, and the size of the force could vary, but um, so I, I could change the size of the force. So depending on the size of the force, what happens is the planet does not go from B to lowercase c, but instead goes from B to capital C. See this force, B to F, uh, combines with the force from B to lowercase c, and the planet instead goes in the direction of the diagonal of this parallelogram. That depends on the size of the, of the force. So now the planet is going to go like this instead. And 
it's going to create instead a different triangle. It's going to create this triangle over here. Now what I want to prove to you is that that triangle also has the uh, has the same area as the original triangle. That the, all three of them have the same area. I'm going to prove that to you over here. Here I have two triangles that both have base AC. There is a little overlap here, but you can see I've got triangle ADC, which is sort of the green triangle, and then I have triangle ABC, which is the orange uh, triangle. Now these triangles uh, have the same area, and the reason that is is because uh, area of triangles half base times height. The heights are the same, literally the same line segment, uh, sorry, the bases, but the heights are the same also because this B is on this parallel line, the, this line is parallel to AC, so the height is sort of the distance between the, the line uh, AC and the parallel line to it. So that's why these two triangles have the same height. And this picture is going to appear in the Newton diagram. We've already established that triangle ABS has the same area as this triangle SB, lowercase c. But now if I put in this third triangle, we have the situation from before. You see this third triangle SB capital C has the same base as SB lowercase c and because this line segment is parallel to this we have the same situation as in that other picture where these two triangles have the same height. So triangle SB capital C has the same area as triangle SB lowercase c but that had the same area as triangle SBA and this is why um, this triangle has the same area as this triangle. So even if there is some kind of a force, the equal areas in equal times from Newton, or from Kepler, is still true. Now in this picture I have uh, one of those triangles, and if I, I created a tool that lets me make new ones, so if the force is, is this size, the second triangle is going to look like this, and the third triangle is going to look like this, and the fourth triangle, I'm going to make this, uh, this force a little bit smaller to get a better picture, and the next triangle is going to look, uh, look like this. And as you can see, it starts making a path that looks something like some circular circle or an ellipse. All of these four triangles as you can see, have exactly the same area. So we get equal times, equal areas and equal times. And if these forces were changing and some of them were big and some of them were small, it wouldn't matter. Although in reality, the sun's going to have a consistent force and if what it does for one, it's going to do for the others. But even if the sun on every impulse did a different thing, made some big forces, some small forces, it wouldn't matter. You would still have all these triangles having the same area. Now, if the impulses of the sun are closer together, you get something that doesn't look like a bunch of triangles, but looks more like a smooth curve, and that's where you get, so, um, you know, 50 of those little tiny triangles makes a smooth-looking curve that takes a certain amount of time, and the 50 next triangles make another smooth curve. Now, I want to show you how the orbits look under some different scenarios. So the first scenario is what if the sun's not exerting a force, and as you can see, what happens is that the planet would go, and make these these triangles, and each triangle would have the same area. <clears throat> but let's look at some different scenarios. What if the force, instead of being um, instead of being no force, there's a constant force? So this little direction here is the constant force, and you can see I've made a little piece of the parallelogram, this sort of triangle here. And here's what happens under this scenario: it makes something that kind of looks like a strange sort of, almost like a circle, almost like an ellipse, so you get an unusual orbit there. Under that scenario, the force is constant regardless of how far the planet is from the sun. But it turns out that uh, the planet, it, it seems like the further away, the, the less force. So let's see what happens under uh, a scenario where the force is proportional to the reciprocal of the distance. We get something like this, which is also looking kind of unusual, like an ellipse a bit. 
to be continued in part four.